Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jay, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about custom ZBrush UI. I wanna talk about my custom UI, how you can download it and install it. So there's a link down in the description below where you can go uh, download my UI that I use for ZBrush along with some brushes and stuff. Right now, I'm just gonna link it to my Patreon and I'm just gonna attach it to a post there. Maybe I'll put it on my like online stores later on. I don't know, but for now, just gonna put it on the shiny new Patreon page and I'll just make it public and I'll also attach this video, which is kind of a how to install it also. So here we are in ZBrush 2022. This is kind of what spurred this video on is because it's kind of what's been keeping me from doing this video is that it's a little bit complicated, unfortunately. I like ZBrush, obviously I love ZBrush and I like a lot of their custom UI stuff, but there's not a cinchy way to move it and to install it. And you gotta do a lot, of, there's a lot of steps. So it kind of sucks. I wish they stored everything into one file, but they don't. So here we go, let's try. Now that I downloaded ZBrush 2022, this is a fresh ZBrush. This is probably what you're used to looking at. So we're gonna close it and then I'm gonna install my custom UI. And then we'll see if everything ports on over, if I don't screw up and I don't make it look more complicated than it is, but should be pretty easy. So let's just quit ZBrush. Step one, quit ZBrush. And here we go. Uh, this is my setup that you can download. And here we have ZBrush 2022 yeah, right here on the right. Okay, so I also included a README, uh, which is kind of a text version of what we're doing right now. Pretty straightforward. We're just gonna copy the files from their directory on the left here from the ZBrush setup, and we're gonna put it in the actual ZBrush. And I named the folders correctly. So ZBrush keeps their files scattered around. That's what makes this kind of tricky. Like the interface and the colors and the hotkeys and the config and the startup. Uh, there's a lot of configs, uh, you know, kind of annoying. So anyways, these big updates, like the little micro patches or whatever you want to call them, the incrementals, they move your stuff over, which is nice. But in these big ones, they don't. We have to do it ourselves. And that's what we're doing. So let's just go right in here. So we got ZBrush closed. First thing, we're just going to do the Z data. So I open Z data right here and then in the actual ZBrush directory, we'll just look for Z data. There it is. Cool. So I've got brush presets and materials. So I included a couple brushes. I included my standard brush. Uh, we'll get into the UI here and kind of, maybe I'll talk you through why I did what I did. But yeah, I got my standard brush and I also threw in my little fine line brush. So these are brushes that I made custom. You know, they're not crazy, but I use them in my work and I thought you can use them too. And it's also, this is featured in my UI. We're gonna copy these brushes and we're gonna put them into the brush presets folder. Like I say, you can just follow the name of the folder. So it should be pretty easy. So we'll go and do materials now. We'll jump back out here and we'll go to materials, startup, startup, blend. So this is just a simple blend I got years ago. It's featured in my UI and I like to use it to check shiny surfaces. So there you go. It's just a basic blend material. Back over here. Now we're out of Z data and we're in Z startup. So let's come back up here. Here we are in the root. Z startup, boink, there we go. So hotkeys, we'll talk about that, boom. Hotkeys, boom. I'm actually gonna replace this, why not? This is just a text file, it'll overwrite it every time you save your hotkeys in ZBrush. You can actually see it's just a text file, so you can even edit this in text. I don't do much in here, we'll show you. I just do a couple things. Jumping back out, user interface colors is first just because of alphabetic order. I included a bunch of fun colors in here, you know, so have fun with that. The one I use is called Blue 2.0. That's what I use all the time, but I got some from some friends and I made some like this GameCube one for fun. So, you know, play around with this. Just put these like extra things in here for funsies. So there's the colors, boom. And now the layout, boom, interface, layout, copy, paste. There is my interface, cool. Now we're gonna open up ZBrush again. So here comes ZBrush 2022, and then we'll have to set some of this stuff up and continue on with the customizing. All right, so here it is again. And uh, yeah, so we're not done. Uh, we're gonna uh, close the light box, okay. All right, so first let's check if our colors came through. So we go next, user interface colors, there you go. It says right here actually the name of the color. So there you go, blue 2.0. We're done there. Now we do the interface layout. Let's go here, compact, default, and there's our layout. JHUI 1.2, good. You can see there's still stuff we're gonna need to do here cause it doesn't save everything. All right, so um, this got rid of some of the extra stuff. Now we gotta do a couple things because, okay, well, this is the interface and the layout. 
Now we're going to kind of change our startup document, like our environment. These are things that will be different if you save the ZBrush project file. So I know I don't want to make it more complicated. This is what this is how I do it. All right. So first thing I do is I set the proportions to my monitor. So I actually I have a 4K monitor, but I run it in 1080 on here so that it's a little bit faster. So I hit resize. There we go. This should be full now. If I hit tab, this should be like full looking good. Now I'm going to get rid of the gradient there. There you go, starting to look familiar now. And then I need to change the size of my stuff. I like smaller text, smaller buttons, gets it out of the way. Like I said, I make it 1080, so if you run yours in 4K, maybe it's fine. I actually don't know. These numbers might be different. These numbers are different, you know, based on your resolutions. If you can uh, run it in 1080 on your 4K monitor, I do advise doing that because it's just so much faster, you know, and there's really no reason I don't think to sculpt in 4k right now. So anyways, let's jump into preferences and we'll change the size of stuff. So interface, UI, button size, this is 48 by default. So I just changed this to like 38 to 40. And you see here, it'll be adjusted next time you start ZBrush. Okay, so we can do that. But before we do that, we need to save this as our startup document. So you can go document, save a startup, boink, and then there you go, it says it's been stored. You can also, when you make these customizations, you can also hit uh, Control Shift I and that'll store the configuration file. I also put my configuration files in my setup that you can download. I have no idea if moving them will work. We're kind of going through the process right now anyways. So let's close this and open it again and see what we got. Boom, here we go. It's small, it's gray, it's cool. So I can go full screen and this should be what you're used to looking at, bada bing, bada boom. If I hit tab, this is almost full screen. 1080 is a little bit outside of the canvas, obviously, but you know, 1080 is my monitor, which is good. You don't want it to be too big because it has to draw all that and it's gonna mess things up. So you really want your document size to be the size of your monitor. And you can see how beneficial it is to have all this extra stuff. So really quick, let me just load up a little scene here. Boom. So here we are in a scene and I'll talk you through why I did some of the things I did. So that we don't need no grid. Boop. All right, cool. Or actually, maybe it makes maybe it looks makes like more official. Look at that. Now we're in 3D. Ooh, there's a grid. Okay, cool. So my hotkeys, pretty simple. One, two, three, four. You can see down here. Ooh, 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 these are my brushes. So as I switch through them, you can see I kind of do it in order of brushes I use the most. But you know, not thinking about it too much. But it's muscle memory now. One is move brush. That's definitely the number one brush. Two clay buildup. That's my sculpting brush. Three damn standard. Come on now. And four, that's my JH standard. So I included this brush, obviously. So if all the files in the right folders and blah, 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 then when you hit four, this is what happens. And so it's just the standard brush, but I changed the settings that I ended up changing every time I open ZBrush and I have the little chisel alpha here, which I think is better. I prefer sculpting with a little bit of an edge, you know, rather than like that round stuff. So it just helps me to find transitions, forms, planes and stuff like that. So this is my standard brush. Okay, um, shift F is to see polyframe that might be by default i actually don't remember anymore what's default and then some other things holy smokes this is new i don't know what that is but i, I did want to say that like i changed my um visible sub tool count to like 12 or something and i think you have to save this so you might need to save your config again a little note remember when we came up here to document and we did save startup document you don't want to do that with any, like if you did that with the sphere in here, then when you launch ZBrush, it's this every time. So you want it to be a blank canvas when you store that. And now you could store the config there and that should keep my 12 visible count. So those kind of changes, that's how you save it. Okay. Now some other stuff. If I did this and I did this uh, just to show you shift S that's my hotkey for solo. So shift F wireframe shift S solo that in the brushes that might be my only hotkeys you can look at the text file and find out but like I said I don't remember anymore but this is the stuff I use constantly and that's why I put it all in the lower left of my keyboard so I can hit everything generally why I did my UI feel free to edit this or don't use my layout you could use my colors and my hotkeys I don't care if you wanted to sculpt like me or follow along in the videos if that helps you somehow Obviously, I like uh, putting the brushes down here too because you guys can see like what it is in the settings down here. But this is kind of like my brush zone right here. Like I've got my most used brushes right here. That's what this is. Uh, my second most used, I should say. So one, two, three, four is my most used brushes all the time. I got to have 
it on my fingertips because I want to just be sculpting. You know, I don't want to leave the surface. So that's what this little pen is down here. This is my grab bag. So that's my second quickest thing. They're in the holster right here, these second ones. Uh, like clay for sculpting, which is my alternative to clay build up. I use inflate and pinch quite a bit for manipulating sizes in a big way. Age polish and flatten for different kind of like planar sculpting stuff. And then obviously Z modeler, which I use for doing like little modeling tasks. Okay, and then always I can come in here, you can get any brush, you can start typing, you know, you know how that works. As we move down this way, uh, you can see it's my color stuff. If I need to do a quick um, poly paint fill, that's what I do. I can choose my colors here. I can do my RGB and my Z intensity. I can do my lazy mouth settings. Uh, and then over here is some fiber mesh stuff like preserve length. And then also I put back face mask right here, which helps, you know, when you're sculpting something very thin, sometimes you'll be sculpting the other side. So sometimes you got to mask that. So I've got the things I use that I don't want to go digging in menus. That's the idea. So this is like my brush region over here on the left, by the way, you can see my materials. These are, uh, I use basic material all the time. Blend number two, skin shade kind of number three and flat color I use for checking silhouette and also in ZBrush. That's how you wipe out poly paint information if you didn't know. If you fill it with white flat color, that's how you delete poly paint. So those are my most used materials. That's why I put it in the UI. And if you installed Blinn uh, and then use my UI, hopefully that worked too. There you go. All right. And then moving on, um, what I did around the side here, I also removed a lot of junk that I don't use. ZBrush you can use for so many different tasks. So I'm just, this is just how I work uh, for the kind of things that I make. Up here, these are just for storing views, reference views and stuff. I think there's an, in the new update, I think there's a way cooler way to do that. So that might be mute here. But here is my kind of way of sculpting. I've made videos on this, obviously, but going from Dynamesh to sculpt in the beginning to make shapes, make blobby stuff like digital clay to just make shapes, you know? And then I make base meshes out of that with Z remesher. I make clean meshes uh, that I can use to subdivide, that I can make clean, high poly efficient models that have subdivision levels I can go up and down, and then I can make the most clean and polished surface. So this is how I work, and that's why from left to right, we have the tools that do that. And then up here in this little section, is kind of like some stuff that's in different uh, menus, like deformation menus and stuff that I use quite a bit. So like delete hidden, that's in a subtool menu, geometry menu. I use this quite a bit. Split hidden, I use quite a bit. Auto groups and group visible, I use quite a bit. Obviously duplicate. This mirror is actually from Z plugin from the subtool master, which is a nice mirror. You can see it highlight. The other mirror is down here, which I do have to dig still, but this one actually duplicates and mirrors for flipping stuff. And then obviously mirror and weld. So, and that's about it. Uh, that's my UI in a nutshell. That's why I did what I did. And uh, now you can do it too. And you can edit it or again, follow along if that helps or something. But at least hopefully this served as a kind of explainer on how to edit ZBrush the way you want, how to save those files in a way that you can move them to a future ZBrush. Or if you need to go to another computer, if you need to go to a job or whatever, Storm and Dropbox, and you can just have this wherever you go, and you can edit this like I did over time. Like the brushes, one, two, three, four, you should make them your most used brushes. Maybe it's not the same brushes. So that's just some of the thinking that went behind my custom UI. Feel free to download it, edit it, and have fun with that. Hopefully, you find that helpful, and hopefully, you found this video helpful. And, uh, and yeah, just a quick one. So yeah, head over to the link and download it if you want. And, uh, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.